A new party in Uganda's political space, the People's Front for Freedom. That was a name that was reserved at the Uganda Electoral Commission by the Katonga faction who were from the Front for Democratic Change. There are conversations that there was a delegates conference that resolved to dissolve the Front for Democratic Change party. Today, we want to hear what is really going on in the FDC camp. I'm privileged to be sitting with the president of the Forum for Democratic Change Party, Patrick Oboy Amuriat. Patrick Oboy Amuriat, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you very much, Solomon. Thank you for having me here. I'm excited to be on this show for the very, very first time and uh, to commend you for really understanding our situation as the Forum for Democratic Change, yeah. that the FDC has got one president, and that president is Patrick Oboy Amuriat. I think it was a slip of the tongue on your part when you say the faction of FDC in uh, Katonga. This, the party that I lead is not factionalized. It does not have factions. We have just got one mainstream, and I think for the sake of clarity, I would like to add that this mainstream has got its registered offices on plot 1164 Entebbe Road in Kampala, commonly known as Najanakumbi. It has a leadership that is registered by the regulator of the um, parties or political parties and organizations in this country, that is the Electoral Commission of Uganda. And I'm registered as the party president together with the other officials. We have got members of parliament who uh, were elected as FDC, 30 in number now, about to get to 31. And um, <clears throat> we continue to receive uh, financing from uh, the government through the Electoral Commission by statutory arrangement. We also continue to field candidates whenever an opportunity arises. And so by and large, really the control of the party the legitimate, you know, leaders of the party, uh, the leaders whom I had mm -hmm. as president of the FDC. And that's where I was coming from. I just wanted to jump in real quick because there was a statement that was released and, uh, and it's, I'm sure you've seen it, it's dated 26th of August 2024, signed by Chairman Ambassador Waswa Birigwa, clearly on the Front for Democratic Change headed paper. And this is what it says, notice to dissolve the... Uh, Forum for Democratic Change Party, pursuant to the resolutions of the National Delegates Conference that sat on the 19th of August 2024, notice to dissolve the Forum for Democratic Change is hereby issued in accordance to Article 36 of the Forum for Democratic Change Constitution, uh, dated at Kampala this day of the 26th day of August 2024, under my hand, Ambassador Waswa Birigwa. The party that you're saying, there's a faction that is saying, it has dissolved the Front for Democratic Change. We'd love to hear from you. What's going on in, within in the Front for Democratic in Change In this party? country, anybody can go to NASA Road and produce a, a headed paper. When you look at what uh, Waswa Birigwa presents there, it's a headed paper with an address on six, plot six, Katonga Road. I mean, uh, this is not our address uh, to begin with. And um, I would like to inform viewers that that is posturing in its, at its best. And that um, for us, we are unbothered about that notice. It does not affect us. The people who should be making such a notice under Article 36 of our constitution should be us. The legitimate leaders, the recognized leaders. And I'm just wondering that notice is really for the sake of confusing the public. <clears throat> what it's, it's, its effect going to be? Zero. It's not going to affect the manner in which we operate. We are not going to shut down on account of that notice even for a single minute. And so we would just like to spend time informing the, uh, the, the population, especially our members, that that letter has got no effect at all because it was um, a result of a resolution taken by a body that was illegally constituted, uh, something that court determined many months ago, 
And it's very surprising that people who claim to have gone to school, you know, having huge degrees are not utilized that, utilizing that knowledge that even a common village person uh, would be able to uh, discern. And you raise that in your reaction to um, the, this later, and, and I mean, you mentioned it was a four or five page document, clearly laying out the historical perspective. The FDC party members are confused. There's the delegates conference that is happening that is chaired by Wasabirigua, which of course that camp has Dr. Kiza Besije, it has Elia Sukwago, Semu Junganda, some of the big wigs within the Forum for Democratic Change. Then they have, there's the party president, Patrick Amuria Toboy, who also has, you know, also sometimes, he also called the delegates conference. It has the Nathan Nandala Mafavis and, uh, you know, a, a, a list of all other party members. There's confusion within the Forum for Democratic yeah, Change. Yeah, it party. is that confusion that we are laboring to sort out. And um, um, we sympathize, of course, with the public, with our members who have been put into this kind of situation. As far as the leadership of the FDC is concerned, there's no confusion whatsoever. And so our biggest task at the moment is to sort out that confusion in the minds of the public and settle this matter in as far as the understanding the situation is concerned, particularly for our members and also you know, the political players in this country. And I think that this is the strategy that uh, our friends sitting in Katonga have adopted. Continue to stir up the water, cause confusion, not allow us to settle. You know, whenever we go out, they are bringing in something new. But I believe that, you know, time is going to be our best ally in this because that notice of six months, the six months will come and whatever they would like to do uh, based on the notice that has been given, is going to fall through, definitely. You know, as, as uh, day follows night, you know, I would say to you that um, that is just uh, merely misinforming the public and it's no, of no consequence to the stability of the FDC. Well, it could be because they're presenting these resolutions of the delegates' conference to the Electoral Commission um, as part of the paper that they have dissolved the Forum for Democratic that, that, Party. That is, again, another level of misunderstanding because I don't think the Electoral Commission is going to admit this kind of fun, you know, because they do not have authority. I think what uh, our friends should be preoccupied with mm -hmm. is, first of all, to take control over the party if they're interested in the party. But if they are not interested in the party, then I would like to say that what they have started doing mm -hmm. in forming a new political organization is noble. It's a good thing. It's allowed by the Constitution. It's guaranteed by the Constitution under the articles of the Constitution that guarantee freedom of association. And so my advice to our friends is if they really feel that there's mismanagement of the institution called the FDC, if they feel that the leaders are not serving the interests, their interests and the interests of the public, allow them to continue doing what they are doing. Form a new organization, go with that new organization and go and speak to the people of Uganda. Advance your agenda to them and let your agenda be accepted. I think that to form an organization by first killing the one that you belong to, that some of these people, people like Dr. Kiza Besige, were part of the formation, is you know, self-defeating. I, I believe that it is being done in bad faith. It is not right. And the intention is rather than target the you know, organization, they are targeting the individual members who are leaders within this organization. You see, according to that faction of of, of FTC. Again, Again so I don't know how to use no. it. So what, what can that, I that use? Group, that oh, group okay. of people. <laughs> they are not a faction of our party. They have uh, clearly said that the, the, the direction that FDC or the party was taking was did not was not good that the purpose of, of the Forum for Democratic Change and the reason why that party was formed, you have veered off and therefore the framers of the FDC uh, constitution foresaw a, a place where 
the party could be dissolved under Article 36 of, of the Constitution. And they are moving through that article to say, this is not what we envision the party to look like. And you know, it is in, let's, it's now time for us to dissolve the party. There is no need to dissolve the party. And I think there is a history to this. Of course, we have had our strange uh, disagreements within the party from the time of its inception. And um, this is not going to be the first time that uh, a group of, of people decide to leave the party. We have a history to this. In 2010, my sister and good friend, Betty Olive Kamia Namisango Ruomwe, disagreed with Dr. Kizabeski and his administration. By the way, not, we, we should uh, note the fact that um, uh, Turuomwe was a political powerhouse, especially in the central region. She brought a lot of people into the FDC from amongst her own kin and kith, and was a great asset to us. But she disagreed with the establishment. She disagreed with Dr. Kizabeske. She felt we were moving in a wrong direction. She decided to form a new party, the Uganda Federal Alliance. And she did seek to dissolve the FDC in order to form a new organization. The second hiccup the federal alliance. That, that we experienced in our political history of 20 years was the departure of General Muntu, such a gentleman who felt mistreated by his own party. He was one, just like uh, Betty Kamia, one of the founders of the FDC. He came to me and said, Paul, I think there's something wrong that you have not seen in that organization that you now lead. I am going out to carry out consultations. And he put this in writing, such a decent man. He put it in writing. And I said, well, brother, go out, do what you want and come back and we have a conversation, which he did. He returned to my office at the FDC and said to me, look, we have consulted and it looks like we are on our way out. The following weeks we had intense negotiations to try and keep him within the fold. Unfortunately, I think he and his team had taken a decision to move out. And indeed, they moved out. They did not seek to dissolve the political organization called FDC. What is special about this? Lukwago, Semuju, Ambassador Birigwa. I would like to say they do not feel the pain of the formation of this organization. And that's what I was going to say. Because, yeah, because Ambassador Birigwa came on the eve of an election in 2015 in Lugogo. He had just crossed from the NRM. And we are totally blind, and I think I would like to tender our apology to the public for disrespecting our constitution, especially to those who contested with Birigwa, Wandero Galo, the late Absolomo Bwanika Bale from Luero. These were main contenders for the seat of chairman. They were founder members of the FDC. They were big names within the FDC. But Wechitibwa, Birigwa, and which team caused confusion in that delegates conference, claiming this was a big wig, a big name, in total disregard of the provisions of our constitution. And so we end up having a half-baked person in as far as the affairs of the FDC are concerned, and no wonder we are now having to lie on the bed that we lay, on a bed of thorns, because of a person who has got little consideration for the existence of the FDC. This applies to Semuju, somebody who came from journalism and came straight opportunistically into the FDC, wanted to win, brought in by Njuba. Njuba, who was a very powerful political figure in Chadondo East. And you know, he is just carried by Njuba to parliament. That, is, that was his main objective. Yeah, but Semuju Manda has been look, a very strong look, pillar within the Front for Democratic well, Change Party. Well, well, there's no doubt about that. But you know... He has been if, the party's chief whip. He has been one of the spokespersons of the party. A strong 
some of those positions fall within the party. Some of those positions. You can't dismiss him like that. Some of those positions are given on a give and take basis. He should be cognizant of the fact that uh, Ibrahim Semuju should have left with General Mutu because he was his chief campaign manager against me. And he called me all sorts of names. But in the spirit of reconciliation, we said, well, come back. We are going to guarantee that you continue being in that position as the chief opposition whip at the time when we were the leading opposition political party in parliament. And you know, when you look at uh, um, the Lord Mayor of Kampala, my, my brother Elias Lukwago, also coming in the same way, we thought he had reformed. Because, you know, Lukwago, everywhere he's gone, he's been a source of confusion. He will, he will be known for that in the political history of this country. There is no doubt about that. And, you know, his record speaks for, for itself. But, you know, we, we were able to, we decided that would turn a blind eye to this kind of uh, um, history that he had. And we thought, you know, we could transform him. We also believed that he would bring in new um, energy into the FDC by bringing in his followers from Kampala. He didn't do that. And instead, we realized a little bit too late, after I had appointed him, deputy president, to deputize me, coming from Buganda, I realized too late that he, had, he was an implant to cause confusion, new confusion within the FDC. And then we said, okay, if you want the leadership of FDC, let us go to the elections. They said, no, we don't want elections. We want a postponement of elections. There's confusion in the FDC. And by the way, what is manifesting itself today as a source of confusion began over four years ago. And that's in what fact, it has ask. got ties to our history. Yeah, and that's where I was going to come, in, come from, Boa. How did we get here? Well, it is historic in nature, unknown to most of uh, political players in this country and those who follow the politics. It began by the creation of camps in our very first delegates conference that took place in Krugersdorp outside Johannesburg, at which delegates conference, we endorsed Dr. Kiza Besige as our leader. She was in exile, as I said earlier, at the time. But immediately, General Muntu went to Dr. Besige and said, I am going to compete with you. After that endorsement, this is unknown to many political players and, you know, citizens of this country. And from that point, there emerged the Muntu camp and the Besige camp. Now, the current leaders within the FDC are Besigeists or were believers of Besige. Those who went with Muntu were believers of Muntu. So these camps caused a lot of friction within the organization. And little did we know, we who were followers of Dr. Besky, by the way, religiously, a number adored him. What he said was the law. What he said was gospel truth to most of us. We did not understand him as a person who believed he should be the leader all the time. And some of these things that are happening, you know, the moment I got to the leadership of the FDC, everybody thought the blue-eyed boy of Dr. Besige was now in the leadership. And so the Besige camp, which I belonged to at the time, wanted to have full control over the political organization that I led. They wanted to direct what would happen in the political organization. They wanted to continue having influence on the political organization that I led. They continued to operate parallel structures which were not clearly aligned to the FDC. And when I said, wait a minute, gentlemen, we are going in the wrong direction. I am not going to go with you using that borders operand. And they said, no, he's been compromised. He's been given money by Nandala Mafabi. They have received money from Museveni. 
And you know, to this, I really laugh, a big laugh, because um, maybe known to a number of, uh, of people, historically, I have opposed Mr. Museveni. We've challenged him, even when Dr. Kiza Beske was still part of that rotten system. We've continued to challenge him. And to this day, which we continue to challenge him. And so, when Dr. Kiza Beske presented an opportunity, we thought, well, this was a force to reckon with. We should ally with this force. But you know, he found us in the opposition. That is our history and nobody can change this. And so, um, you know, coming up to say, well, he could continue to control us and uh, unleash propaganda against us is something that was extremely disappointing. We were disappointed at him. And so we have continued to run the party even without him. The second aspect uh, that needs to be considered is the fact that we as the FDC have faced the brunt of cruelty because we are the single political organization that has transcended the syndrome called founder syndrome. We have transited from it. And that uh, where one individual would want to hold on to the party as if it was a personal property, like is in the case in UPC, the case in the Democratic uh, Party, the glaring case in the NRM. You know, we have gone out of that. Ours is a, liberate, a liberated party where leaders can come and go. And that, you know, Dr. Kiza, Dr. Kiza basically had his influence, he made his contribution, but it was time for him to move and, and uh, you know, sit aside and operate from the sidelines while giving advice to the new leaders. General Mutu did come. Time for him came through a demo democratic process, free, fair, and credible election for him to move. And he, he moved. Time for power has come. He's in the seat at the moment. His time will, the time will come when he has to move. And a new set of leaders come in place. In fact, I just have four more years, you know, to be president of the FDC, and I will no longer be president of the FDC. Unless something miraculous happens, I will never. And so, apart from exhibiting or exercising internal democracy, we have also beaten the founder syndrome, which continues to cause trouble in most political organizations in this country. Now, we have also stopped relying on leaders. And uh, I am a good testimony of this. Um, during the election of 2021, I offered myself as presidential flag bearer of the FDC. At the time, we had hoped that Dr. Kiza Beske would take up the challenge again. He refused to take up the challenge. In fact, it was in his mind that the FDC should back up, back Bobby Wine, Robert Chagulani Sentamu. And we had a number of meetings to this effect, which meetings I challenged as not being the legitimate organ to decide for the FDC. When the matter was taken to the National Council, the National Council, the National Council, by the way, is uh, a collection of uh, chairpersons of our chapters across the country. The National Council said, we are going to fill candidates in all positions, wherever it's possible. And this is what happened. No BCJ, power. No BCJ even coming to the campaign, but power pulling through. And you can trust that it earned us some political dividend. 2021 was without Dr. Kiza Besge, our big drum. And so the small drums are now developing into, you know, powerful drums. You know, I'm sure that in 2026, he will no longer be with us totally, would not even wish him. How did us. that make you feel? Well, there, uh, no, there was a lot of um, pain in my heart uh, because uh, we had worked with Dr. Kiza Besge for a long time. It was a mix of pain and sweetness for, for that matter. Um, 
and that we had expected him as our founding president to be part of the campaign, he declined, giving his own reasons. But I'm glad that I told him later that I felt that he never came to the campaign because he wanted to preserve himself politically, given the wave of the people power and loop that engulfed the entire country in, um, ahead of the election of 2021. But also, we began to believe in ourselves from that point going forward. I am sure that there's going to have to be serious negotiation in choosing the next presidential candidate. I'm very certain a number of people are going to express interest because they now know that it's possible to do it even in the absence of Dr. Kiza Besige, who is a big political player in this country. If we are to flip that coin as well, um, under your leadership, the Farm for Democratic Change Party has performed worst. For example, fielding the number of MPs in the House, you've lost your position as the party, opposition political party that has the most number of MPs and therefore can move the House to some extent. And perhaps the, your modus operandi is one of the reasons why, you know, big wigs within the Forum for Democratic Change, like Dr. Kiza Besige, like, you know, the likes of Semu Junganda and the Wasabirigwas, felt that you're not driving the party in the right direction. If that was the case, then they should have come and removed me democratically, all the leaders in the FDC. Uh, when you look at um, uh, the environment under which we operate today, it's completely different from the environment that we operated in 20 years ago. Uh, 25 years ago when uh, uh, Dr. Kizabeske uh, shot into fame. But the party, the party evolves with the time. It cannot be the same political well, party well, as it was 20 well, years ago. Well, that is true. Uh, consider also the fact that uh, there's voter party and the narrative of the 2021 elections. You know, everyone, the, the narrative, especially of Noob, was that we had failed totally. In a gullible a uh, voter in the country would believe them. Because as a party, we had been there three times. With Dr. Kiza Besge, we had been in the election four times. And FDC and, was and one of the biggest, uh, uh, yes, presented yes, the biggest yes, opposition yes, force yes, against the NRM. Indeed. And at the time, all of us were united. You know, when we first, as a political party, contested for the presidency in 2006, we were together. Betty Kamiya was there, brought in sub, Beatrice Anwar, Alex Onzima, all these founder members. Kalegan Juba was still alive. Suleiman Chikundu was there. Prince Kimera, all these powerful people who have since passed on. We were united. There were no contradictions in the party. Then we began to experience contradictions. A major force breaks away in Betty Kamiya. Another major force breaks away in um, um, General Mugisha Muntu going with nearly 20 members of parliament. Surely you should be praising me on this show that the FDC is still alive. People shouldn't point fingers at me. They shouldn't point fingers at my administration. And again, the environment changed. As I observed, there was a huge wave of people power, a noob. And senior members which, which, from which, your party. Which, which you cannot wish away. I mean, you, you and, and senior members of your party left and joined noob. Well, I don't know how many did. Um, but I think that um, it's more accurate to say that they, they left and joined the Alliance for National Transformation. Not many of the FDC joined noob. Even those who would have loved to stuck with the party. But you know, that wave certainly could have changed the mindset of the people. And you no know, people who were ether to part of our voters decided to shift. And this can happen to noob any time when a new player comes in presenting new hope. And that is the dynamics of our politics. And that is what Mr. Museveni has put us into. It is also true that during the elections of 2021, there was a, 
a ban on movement. We did it under the sit a situation of um, a COVID a pandemic and a lockdown. And there, we could not campaign freely. No wonder in the 65 days when I was supposed to be uh, campaigning, I was arrested 45 times, sometimes twice in a day, confined in vehicles, under handcuffs, sometimes, you know, incarcerated in police stations. Today, I have about 10 cases, political cases, across the country. They're littered across the country on account of that election. So the FDC merely did not present their agenda. And of course, this situation was taken taken advantage of by a celebrity, a musician, turned politician, whom everyone now looked at as, you know, the new person who would bring, you know, change to this country. And they ignored, the population ignored the fact that we had been going through a lot of political turmoil in the many times that we had contested. I am glad that to the, to the advantage of the FDC today, the population will appreciate the task that we had before us in the previous elections. Patrick Oboyamuriat, I feel that Ugandans are very disappointed within, we are disappointed with what is happening within the Front for Democratic Change. We felt that you could do more to unite the big forces within the party and, and present a formidable force. Um, I mean, you ha we thought that beyond these divisions, that senior members within the party could look away from their personal differences, unite and come together, you know, go back to the Forum for Democratic Change party that we knew, that, you know, go past all your differences, reconcile people. And you as the president, that was one of your core deliverables, bring people together, come back to... The FDC, we knew you have big wigs. You have Dr. Kiza Besige. You have the Patrick uh, Amuya Toboy. You have the Semujungandas. You have the Rukwagos. The force that we thought could iron out its differences and come together and, and present an alternative agenda to Ugandans. Many of them are disappointed with, by the FDC. I appreciate the disappointment of Ugandans uh, with us or in us. I also feel the pain that they do feel because uh, the FDC is no ordinary organization. We have had to lose blood in the formative stages and even continue to lose uh, people on account of their political beliefs. Many people have been maimed. A number have, have been kept in prison, some of them still in prison for long periods of time. A number of them have been deprived of opportunities while on the path of strengthening this, the FDC. I really feel their pain. And uh, I think if I could do better, uh, of course, within my means, I would really bring this party together. But we got to appreciate that in a situation like this, it takes two to tango. And that whereas we are willing to talk, to dialogue, we are willing even to give away some, something for the sake of bringing ourselves together. But our friends, the other side, are unwilling. And they have made it public. They say they will never talk to these thugs in Najimangumbi. These fellows who have sold our party to Museveni. You know, the narrative has been that the Secretary General and myself have actually sold the FDC to Museveni. And I don't know which part of the FDC has been sold to Museveni. This narrative has subsisted for four years now, and we are still the party that people knew we were, albeit you know, with these internal problems. Many people, by the way, have offered to mediate uh, in the impasse within the FDC, but I think our colleagues have made up their mind to move out of the party. And we can only wish them well wherever they go. Sad what story next of the for FDC, FDC? But the reality, the stark reality of, of the situation. What's next for the FDC? Well, I don't think that we are so desperate at the moment. 
One thing about the FDC is that you're losing a big chunk of the big boys within the party. This is what forming was, a new party. This is what was said when General Muntu left. And as I said earlier on the show, General Muntu left with a real formidable force. They went out. Our only comfort and the greatest comfort that we have is that it is the foot soldiers that make those leaders. The brand of Dr. Kiza Besge was not made by himself. It was created and nurtured, grown by the efforts of the common foot soldier. All of us contributed towards that brand. Without us, you can't have that brand. And this has been demonstrated. Recently, both teams went out to the countryside to engage with the population. When the consultation by our friends in Katonga was announced, we said, okay, let's let them go out. And it was our wish that there would be no disruption by the police. Indeed, they went out. The pictures are there to speak for what happened. You know, the people of Uganda know the kind of reception that they received. The level of mobilization that they achieved is well known. It's written everywhere. In contrast, when we went out mobilizing the population, we got thousands of people. In fact, in the cricket oval in Mbali, we marshaled nearly 30,000 people from Mbale City and the surrounding areas. 20, uh, 14,000, 15,000 in Soroti, almost an equal number in Kasese, and in Arua City, in Gulu, 12,000, in Lugazi, nearly 20,000, and in Jinja, close to 20,000 as well. Now, if you take the level of mobilization by the party that I had as something small, then you are not a close follower of the politics of this country. And I think that uh, we would like to surrender our friends painfully. We would have loved them to keep with us. But as Dr. Kiza basically said in 2019, actually, you know, he thought that we we're beginning to uh, disrespect him in 2019. And he said to us, you know, if we continue this way, then we shall part ways. So this was anticipated. We buckled up in order to weather this storm. From that time, from 2019, five years now, we have continued to dig in to assert the influence of the party in the population. Will you weather this storm? And by the way, I, I, I would like to say to you that much as we would love all the leaders to be with us, to us what is more, most important is the building blocks of this party and the building blocks of this party, the foundation of this party is found in the people. That local chairman, village chairman who rides his bicycle every day to campaign for us, goes to beer parties, goes to funerals, goes to wedding parties, talks about the FDC everywhere, is the person we treasure and we treasure most. The question you are asking today is a question that was asked of me in 2018. That time, you know, Muntu had decided to leave. And together with him, like I said earlier, 25 actually, not 20, 25 members of parliament left. And the media was all over me. You know, this thing has collapsed in your hands. At, at, at one point, I, I believed that it was actually collapsing. I believed the roof was falling on me. But because I had a committed team in the FDC, they said, President, we are going to work together to circumvent this um, occurrence. And indeed, we went back to the population. Most of the 25 members of parliament um, who went against us did not survive the election of 2021. 
the only survivors were Katuntu and Okupa. And we know why they survived. And that puts justification to my assertion that what matters is the people on the ground, not the people at the top. And to answer your question in a single statement, I am extremely confident that under my leadership, we are going to weather this storm. And the FDC is going to emerge stronger than ever before. I see you don't believe me. But I want you to believe me. Because it's going to happen. And the evidence of this is going to be shown in the next election. We are going to be extremely competitive because of the hiccups that we have uh, suffered. We have begun preparations early. And so you are going to see us charging the crowds wherever we are going to go. We are going to start with the exercise of preparing our candidates, not only just, you know, um, having selection done. We are also going to train our candidates, something that we never did before. We are going to go to their constituencies and campaign with them even before the close of this year. So yes. Solomon, expect a, a different cup of tea in the election of 2020. I want to be as optimistic as you are, but I also am alive to the fact that when core pillars of a building are removed, the building's very foundation is not stable. Patrick Oboy Amoriat, does the center still hold? Well, one thing is true about, uh, you know, and by the way, that is my area. My area is the area of construction. And uh, I will say to you, you know, once a pillar is removed and is replaced by another, and especially if it's replaced by something, another pillar that is stronger, the house will stand. The center will hold. I'm extremely confident of that. And I think you've seen us exuding confidence wherever we have gone in this country and would like everybody in this country to hold their breath and see the wonders that we are capable of performing. Patrick Amorito Boy, in, in an answer, is Power for Democratic Change Party still there? Because <laughs> I hear you. We have founding, you know, we have people who, have, who are saying they have dissolved the party. We have Patrick Amore to say the party is still there. One word to the FDC supporters out there and to Ugandans. Do we still have an FDC? I would like to assure our members and Ugandans that FDC still exists. FDC is really a spirit that is going around formed on the basis of uh, uh, equality, on the, on the basis of liberation, and, and that we continue to es espouse these good ideals and we continue to move, move forward. FDC exists so long as the people of Uganda exist, and that these wishful thinkers who think they are going to wind up FDC business will be extremely disappointment, disappointed, and you know, you will see once they fall flat on their face. I also would like to prophesy a stillbirth for the political organization that is being formed as an offshoot of the FDC. A prophecy of doom. <laughs> it's, it's not going to survive because it is uh, built out of hate, you know, very, very bad will towards uh, the organization and the people of Uganda, out of selfishness, and you know, people wanting to hold on to power. You know, some of those leaders hold on to power even when their time has passed. Patrick Oboya Moria, president of the FDC, thank you so much for making time to speak with us. Thank you for having me here. Well, interesting conversations as we closely monitor what's happening really in the Forum for Democratic Change and how it's going to play out. I'm Solomon Serwanja. Thanks for watching. This is The Hard Questions. Thank you.